A Supervisor Guide Chapter 1 Supervising Employees Your Employees Slash Your Workers The most important part of any business are the people, partners, employees, contractors, suppliers. Keep the good ones. Get rid of the bad ones, winners, complainers, lazy workers, thieves, troublemakers. Don't hire too many people. Keep the right number. Don't do business with friends or family because they expect breaks and take everything personally. To meet new business contacts, join associations, groups, chambers of commerce, country clubs, health clubs, online business networking websites and so on. If you can train good managers to do the job and are trustworthy, pay them what they're worth. For every new worker you hire, the ideal is to bring in five times more business than his annual salary. It sounds high but that's what the old school experts say. Be supportive and mature when reprimanding, not angry. All in all, you lose when you punish workers so mind your tongue. Show them how to do it. If they can't or don't, fire them. Hire good employees at the outset. If a person doesn't really like their job or their pay, don't waste time on them. Give good performance bonuses over and above regular salary. Almost everyone thinks that they are an above average employee and deserve more pay so get used to this massive delusion. Have answers ready when they ask for more money. Brown nosers, ass lickers, and Machiavellian types who play politics are usually bad for the company because they are more concerned with getting promoted than doing good work but they serve one purpose. If you treat them like they're important and tell them to do specific things then show you when they're done, you can rest assured that they'll try to impress you. Constructive criticism is necessary but try not to insult your workers who are overly sensitive anyway about getting crap from the boss. A way around this is not to titicize but say I'm gonna show you how I want you to do this. Don't badmouth or fight someone higher than you. They always win in the end. Stay in constant touch with your staff. Make sure they are working on your goals. You can push people without coming off like a mina. Simply don't lose your temper. Be calm and rational when you make demands. Provide a lunchroom for the employees to socialize with each other. Business is business. Don't make it personal when correcting employees. All employees should be cross-trained in multiple responsibilities so they can move around if need be for one reason or another. Everyone needs to be on the same page for the company to succeed. If someone doesn't do the job and slash or disobey you, give them two formal warnings then fire them. Being a friend of the boss should not matter. The person has to pull his weight. Cronyism and nepotism just alienates the others. You can't promote an average worker over a better one just because he's your friend. Your workers will use that against you. Frontline Supervision of Employees When running a business, you have to determine who you want for employees, how you will acquire them and how much you will pay them. You will have to withhold payroll taxes and pay it to the appropriate government agencies. In order to avoid complications, it might be easier to hire temporary workers or independent contractors who you pay by the job than they're responsible for all of their own taxes. From a psychological point of view, virtually all employees, even the worst ones, see themselves as in the top 10% in performance and furthermore virtually every employee thinks that they are not recognized or rewarded enough for their work. This is what you're dealing with, everybody with an inflated view of themselves. Keep that in mind when dealing with your workers. In a survey where workers themselves said what they wanted out of a job, they made the following points. Fair pay for the job they do. Improve their position in life. The ability to move up in either a promotion or greater pay or both. They want the bosses to listen and tell them what's going on with the company. They want civil, fair-minded bosses who are courteous, personable, and treat people like humans. They want temperate, stable bosses who don't blow up at everything, people who are consistent with a middle-of-the-road calm, hard-working personality. They want a relaxed, good work environment where there is a good amount and quality of production but not so much that the workers are always stressing to meet quotas. 
They want flexibility in their job and in their breaks. In an office setting, they want privacy to accomplish their work. They don't want an omnipresent boss who's always checking on them. They want to feel safe and relaxed at work. They want to be proud of their work, to feel that they are doing something worthwhile. People run the show in any frontline business operation not machines. Most people will respect you if you're straight with them and give you an honest day's work if you pay them well. Frontline people maybe didn't go to college or don't wear ties but they're not stupid. They know what's going on so don't try to snow them with academic sounding bull. Be real and straight with them, that's the kind of language they understand, not formal sounding pedantic crap. Don't wear a white shirt and tie to work. It brands you as a nerd conformist. Wear a work shirt like them. It shows them that you're part of their team not separate from them. Don't be afraid to get dirty to learn the operation then do the job every once in a while. Spend an afternoon on the floor here and there working the machines. Try to work as a team. Your job is to keep costs low and production high. You make the product, store it for a while, load it onto trucks to sell it, that's your job. Learn it. Make it a tight quality driven process such that every widget is a clone of each other of the same high quality. Develop good relations with your workers and keep up on the latest technology in all aspects of your field. Try not to be a boss but more like a buddy and a coach in one, one of the boys who just happens to be team captain. Listen when they talk. Heed their advice. Know the union rules so you don't violate the workers' rights. You have to play it by the book with unions. Many managers take some guy off the floor and make him foreman without telling him a thing except to oversee the job. You have to tell your boss you need to talk to him to get him to explain what your exact job responsibilities are. Get your official job description written out so there can be no uncertainty on both sides as to what you're expected to do. Learn your company's policies about dealing with employee safety, emergencies, etc. Know what you can do and what your limits are. Know how much authority you have and use it to create a rewarding job for yourself. Spend your time on production not wasting it on trivial problems. If there are too many trivial problems, you have to change the system so you don't have all that crap interfering with your real job of running a production line. Get your priorities straight. Delegate your crap jobs to a 2IC, second in command, if you have to. Look for ways to improve the job no matter how trivial they may seem to you. Talk to your employees. Ask them to tell you how to improve the job and tell them ways you think they could do better. Don't communicate with your workers by phone or memo. Go on the floor and talk to them. Minimize paperwork. Keep it straight and to the point. Keep walking around the floor and being friendly with the workers, not just to check up on them like Amina. They want to be part of a strong team. Make it happen by being a good, positive boss. You have to nurture them to be their best. Make them feel like they own their work. Treat employees with respect and support them. Be a good role model yourself. Employees will see you as either a leader or a hypocrite. Build personal relationships with employees. Be loyal to your workers by being trustworthy, supportive, and fair. Have a clear agenda of what you expect and tell them about it. Pay workers fairly, offer bonuses whenever possible. Try to operate as a kind of team or family unit. Offer training programs, ways for workers to expand their skilled status to either earn more money or get another decent job if they have to. Talk to your workers regularly to stay connected. Go easy with them and yourself. After all, you're just making time on planet Earth. Provide a safe work environment, both in terms of physically safety and bullying or harassment among the workers. Offer decent pay. What you pay them reflects what they think they owe you. Give them enough work to keep them stimulated but not so much that it's impossible to do so then they laugh cynically and sabotage you. Make it clear that you're a team and everyone is working toward a common goal. Have a good attitude. Attitudes are contagious, either good, or bad. Put other people first. When you do that, 
you are showing everyone that you care and value your employees and your company. When the going gets tough and people feel they can go no further, you will have to provide guidance and inspiration. Never give up. Keep moving forward. You can find books about how to supervise employees at hashtag 658.302 or HF 5549.12 at the library. Supervision of employees. There is nothing better for a man to do than to eat and drink and enjoy himself in return for his labors. Ecclesiastes 2.24 I believe in the above statement as a means of supervising employees. There's a flow to the workplace. You work hard for a while broken up by times of easy work on a day-to-day -day level, in the weekly cycle and even by year. Many places bear down in the winter, go easier in the summer or vice versa. When I worked at a meat production plant, we worked the production line for five hours straight to get the main part of the daily production done then after that, we had an hour for lunch with easy stuff for the last few hours. On slack days, we got off early but every day we made those several tons of product in that first five hour stretch. Everybody knew this was the drill so we lived by it. Find this flow and live by it. People who don't like their work make poor workers. Find good workers who like the job and pay them a fair wage. I personally think true Christians make the best workers because they have a natural joy in life or at least they should. Go to the local churches and ask the minister if you can put an ad up on the church front room wall or ask him if he knows anyone looking for a job. Most times, they know unemployed people looking for work. The basic philosophy with workers is if they can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. If you can't do the job, don't want to, don't like to or are bored then get out of here, find another job more suitable to your needs. Don't drag me down with your petty personal delusions. I pay you to do a job, I expect you to do it with a smile and with good effort while you're here. If not, I don't want you, case closed. The first thing to do in any situation is to talk to the workers in a real way to find out what's going on both on the job and in their personal lives. If your employees do unacceptable work, maybe nobody ever showed them how to do it right or they don't exactly know what standard is expected of them. Maybe they have poor tools, a poor workspace, low pay, personal problems, or poor team spirit. Your job is to inspire them and treat them well. Most jobs require teamwork. Reward the team rather than individual performance if that's the case. A team is only as good as its weakest link. If some projects require individual work or some people work greatly alone, reward them for their efforts. If people at work want to compete with each other as most people secretly do anyway, let them as long as it doesn't create too much animosity and better the corporation. Be honest with your employees even with bad news about upcoming layoffs, work slowdowns, loss of profits, etc. Never promote because of favoritism, nepotism, or seniority. Tell your employees straight up you will promote the best person for the job regardless of time spent on the job or anything else. When you get angry with workers, calm down before you deal with them. One of the biggest boss worker problems is misinterpretation. Give clear instructions. Don't jump the gun when workers screw up. Talk to them first. They may have misunderstood the directions. If you have disgruntled employees and there's tension in the air, talk to each individually to find out what's going on and fix it. Sometimes workers disagree with each other and have minor spats. Other times some people simply hate each other or there's one bully, loudmouth, or jerk making it tough on the rest. Separate the haters. Keep them on in different areas if possible, fire one or both or have a talk with them and tell them they're allowed to hate each other but they have to get along at work if they want to keep their jobs. If you've got a bad apples, get rid of them. Bad apples are either one or all of the following, selfish, aggressive, loud, boisterous, callous, inconsiderate, lazy, trivial, abrasive, obnoxious, or seriously addicted to something like booze drugs, gambling, etc. Sometimes the job is crappy and causes stress which erupts on the work floor. At the very least, you need a clean relaxed workspace, a clean bathroom, 
a reasonable amount of pay and a reasonable amount of perks, breaks, and time off for lunch. The way to inspire employees is to show you give a damn about them, support them, care that they're paid well and get good benefits, tell them what you expect of them, hold a fair standard and always keep a rapport with them talking about the job and their personal lives occasionally. The only way to realistically get employees to increase production is to offer a reward for it like Friday afternoon off for a good week's work or an extra $50 a week if they produce 8 tons of coal or something like that. Many workers don't know you want results. They just dilly-dally around because they think that's the way it goes. You have to tell them you want results. Don't push too hard but tell them they gotta work it, pull their weight for their paychecks but don't be a slave rider. Just expect an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. Employees are generally resistant to changes. They get set in their comfortable ruts. You have to tell them it's for the best and in a few months, once they learn the new way, it will be easier for them and better for overall production. If they don't change, tell them they either go with the flow or ship out. If you have an employee or group of employees with a bad reputation, take their purse, tear them up in front of them, throw them in the garbage and tell them you know they're capable of good work, you want to trust them and you're starting with a clean slate. Give them a chance until they prove otherwise that they can't be trusted to do a good job. If there's too much stress on the job, give them longer breaks and less work. If your employees take long lunch hours and long breaks, post the break times up and tell them they're at work for the purpose of work, longer breaks are unacceptable. Warn the first few violators and tell them if they do it again, they will be suspended from work without pay for a few days. They will learn fast enough. Gossip is a bad thing even though everybody does it. Let people gossip unless it's vicious then step in and tell them to stop it. If a worker wants to trade sexual favors for career advancement or perks, be very careful. The workplace is too close to home. If she feels slighted by you at some point in time, she may betray you and go to your boss to say bad things about you like you've been seducing her, etc. If people hear through gossip that someone has AIDS and won't work with him, educate yourself and them about AIDS by getting some pamphlets about it then talk to the person, explain the situation, ask for the truth and if he denies it, you might consider asking him to do an AIDS test. There are certain privacy laws. Check with a lawyer about the law in your area. Treat minorities the same as everybody else. This works both ways. If you've got an incompetent minority, tell him straight up about the problem and document it with paperwork. That way he or she can't accuse you of discrimination if you have to fire them. When someone reports a case of racism, sexism, sexual harassment, or malicious gossip to you, tread very lightly before you point accusing fingers. The alleged victim may be overly sensitive or trying to get back at the other guy for something so check everything out before you accuse anybody of anything. Get evidence from uninterested parties, not just friends and allies of either side. You, as a boss, have no business judging your workers' behaviors after work so keep your nose out of their affairs except for what they volunteer in small talk and when they're obviously troubled or out of character. In that case, just ask them what's going on. Try to help workers with serious medical illnesses by reducing their work hours, giving them time off, using the company's resources to help them but at some point, they may be a liability. The honorable thing to do is to continue to give them benefits while terminating them from the job. Many workers have personal problems which cause stress which can really screw them up. Everybody's moody and goes up and down. Everybody feels low at some point in time. Accept day-to-day -day moods as a normal part of life but if someone seems to be coming undone, talk to them, Ask them what their problem is that's affecting their work. Offer them help and support. If they get too whacked out, you have to fire them. Work is work, a personal life is personal. If the personal life interferes with work too much, you have to tell the worker, warn him about it and fire him if he doesn't get on it and start doing a full day's work. People are human. They can't keep personal things out of work but for what it's worth, 
Tell your workers you understand they have personal problems but when they come to work you expect work not pettiness or self-pity. A divorced couple who worked for the same company wouldn't stop arguing so the boss gave them an ultimatum and told them one had to quit to keep peace in the workplace. If you catch workers making personal phone calls, playing with the computer, shooting the breeze or sleeping on the job, warn them verbally a few times, make it written the next two times then fire them. If loners do their jobs effectively, let them be. If somebody has bad hygiene or some other problem, the best solution is probably an anonymous friendly letter telling them they have this problem and they should take care of it. They might change. If it doesn't work, you will have to talk to them to straighten it out. Most know-it-alls are harmless. Let them be unless they talk too much then tell them to get some work done. If they repeatedly talk too much, start telling them to zip IT all the time. Angry workers are usually people hurting on the inside. Find the source of their problem and try to solve it. Some people are always angry in response to their miserable lives. They sometimes make good workers because they get their frustrations out at work. They're generally type of personalities, hyperactive, always wound up with energy to burn but beyond that, they're negative people at the core. Try to get rid of them somehow. If somebody's bored, either try to give them work to meet their interest level or tell them to move on because bored workers bring everybody else down. Allow mistakes for everybody, especially if they're unintentional perhaps due to inexperience not due to blatant incompetence. New employees may do strange things to try to prove themselves like try too hard to make friends or be more motivated than everybody else thus making them look bad. Cut them some slack for a while. Some new workers are slow to catch on. Give them some time. Some workers don't know how to accept advice and guidance gracefully. They're too independent or think they know it all. Tell them it's your way or the highway. They have to either get with the program or ship out. If a good worker is slipping, talk to him and ask him why. Older workers near retirement sometimes get lazy. If it's quite close, let sleeping dogs lie. If it's still a year or so away, tell him to get on it, he ain't retired yet. Work is often a battleground between procedures and the free spirit in all of us. Some nonconformists are great workers if you let them be but if you shove rules down their throats, it won't work. They will just hate you more. You have to treat every individual differently and decide how far to let them take their spiritual approach versus your bureaucratic procedures. People who only do what's expected of them and nothing more are not good inspired, ambitious people who love to work. To me, they're bad apples. Get rid of them. Argumentative employees who ride you on every little point are bad apples. Tell them to shut up and do their jobs or go find another one. People naturally get defensive when you try to correct them. Instead of correcting someone, simply tell them you're going to show them how to do something the right way and show them without any mention of them doing it wrong. If there's a weak link who can't do the job, tell them to shape up or get rid of him. Late employees who are also late at getting their work done are unmotivated workers. Tell them to straighten out or ship out. Sometimes incompetent people are nice people or they may be trying extra hard to be nice because they know they're incompetent or are trying to score points by being nice. Try to explain the job responsibilities to them once or twice then if they can't get into it, get rid of them. A lot of pretty young women think they can make it on looks alone but you gotta have skills babe and I'm not just talking about the horizontal kind. If you accept frivolous goofing off behavior and substandard late work, it's your fault for being a lazy enabler and not doing anything about it. If somebody's a good worker but can't relieve stress, help them relieve some of it by giving them a stress book, some time to relax or something like that. Tell loudmouths to shut up and get back to work. Put them in a room alone if they keep talking. If you've got workers from the old school who don't want to change, tell them to get with the program or ship out. If you've got trivial little dweebs, ginks, and jerks working for you, you know what I mean, get rid of them all and replace them with competent workers. Hire immigrants and Christians. Employees will lie to you and give you excuses all the time. 
some of it is tolerable but you have to play each individual by ear. If they do it too much, get rid of them. Beware of employees who backbite and put other employees down. They're negative people. A light easy atmosphere is fine but class clowns went out of style after high school. The reason I never joke is because people live in different moods, sometimes down plus the fact that my jokes might be misinterpreted so I play it straight with everybody all the time as you should. People often miss work with a letter from their doctor. Call the doctor and find out the real deal. Ask them if they can work or not. Next time he gets sick, call him up at home or visit him personally. If you've got a snotty employee who doesn't want to listen to you, get rid of him or her. If one of your workers tries to sabotage you by going over your head to a higher boss because of a disagreement, according to Machiavellian law, he's an enemy. You can do anything you want to get rid of him. Bide your time, be superficially nice and when you get your chance, eliminate him or screw him up any way you can within the bounds of the law. If a worker refuses to work overtime when you really need him, find out why. If it's a lame excuse, his head is not really on the job. Figure out a way to get rid of him. There's either loyalty or no loyalty, no halfway. If some of your employees threaten union pressure in the face of your proposed changes, you may try to talk to them but there's a point where talk becomes cheap and you have to bite the bullet and stand your ground. If you think your changes are justified, tell them you're not budging, make your stand, tell them to bring it on. Sometimes you have to lose a battle to win a war. If you're too soft, your employees will abuse you. You have to know when to be strong. If somebody's stealing, install hidden cameras to catch them in the act. Don't hire minorities just to fill quotas. Hire good people. Don't ride your workers too hard. Know when to pull back. Be objectively honest with performance evaluations. Don't get personal. Keep it job related. Be perfectly clear about everything. Get your employees to repeat back complex instructions. Never criticize anyone in front of anyone else. Give good workers bonuses sometimes breaks from work. Try to be friends with your workers. If you can't, try to keep it at a professional respectful level. Don't take credit for work your workers do. Give them the credit and tell your higher UPS about it. Books about the supervision of employees are at hashtag 658.302 or HF 5549.12 at the library. Perks as incentives for workers. Many organizations offer awards and bonuses as motivating factors to encourage employees to try harder. A bonus is usually a scheduled increase in pay, an annual payment of extra cash or a percentage commission for the monetary amount of sales brought in over and above salary. Awards could be something like employee of the month or a special commendation for doing something extra well. The boss will congratulate the employee, tell her he will write it up and put it in her file to make her look good. Employees like annual payouts, a Christmas or Thanksgiving gift and extra time off, like a Friday afternoon off for a week of good work. The psychological importance is that it makes the employee feel loved and cared of and in return, he will develop more good feelings with his employer and do better work. The more spontaneous the award, the better. Employees expect a Christmas bonus but if you occasionally take them out to lunch, have a party, give them Friday afternoon off, give them each a bottle of wine, etc., you're creating a bond and making yourself come off like a good guy. Don't make bonuses predictable because then they just create a bunch of spoiled brats who grow to expect them. Keep them spontaneous, reserved for times when workers earn them. Money is the best motivator. Recognition for good work is next. Be wary that you don't alienate some employees by giving others awards who are then resented by the ones who don't get them. I personally feel that inviting your employees and their families somewhere for a picnic with booze sets you up as a good guy. This is considered a bonus to employees and they like it. Things workers like that you can give them to keep them happy are as follows. Job security. Fill them in on what's going on in the company. Good pay. Promotion, personal growth. Be loyal to the workers. 
Discipline them discreetly. Show appreciation for their work. Provide interesting work. Be empathetic. Good working conditions. Daycare on-site facility or subsidized daycare. Buy them free lunch. Give them an afternoon off or even a day off. Give them educational films, seminars on company time. A baby bonus for an employee having a baby. Employee of the month, $50 prize. Shower room on-site. Locker room on-site. Nice break room with small library of useful information and trade magazines. Profit sharing. Stock ownership plan. More vacation time. Good health coverage. Good time off for maternity leave. Have paternity leave. Offer dental, disability plans, life insurance, pension plan. Incentives for workers taking classes at college in your field, pay half the tuition. Offer to pay half for computers for workers who want to do work at home. Flexible hours. Cash bonuses. Raises, good wages. Have group activities like weekend retreats at meditation centers or a ski trip, canoe trip, etc. Have social events. Have a bowling night weekly, etc. Fitness center on-site or memberships to fitness center. Supervision websites. Books about the supervision of employees are at hashtag 658.302 or HF 5549.12 at the library. agrm.org. Allbusiness.com. BCRC.com, supervising new employees. BLS.gov slash EPT, employer provided training. BucinasTrainingMedia.com. CabLN.org slash supervising.htm, effectively supervising employees with disabilities. Psych-net.org slash psych-online slash psychol-0401 supervision.html, the good supervisor. Donahue.umassb.edu slash services slash training.htm, the University of Massachusetts Donahue Institute. Ed2go.com, supervision and management online course. Eno.com slash demo slash sdemployees.html, supervising difficult employees. GDTlearn.com, supervisor training solutions. Guidance-research.org. Hardatwork.com. HRIT.com slash catalog slash supervising underscore difficult underscore employees underscore 5009795.htm, supervising difficult employees training video. Leslie.edu slash threshold slash brochure slash contents.html, guidelines for supervising employees with learning disabilities. Managementhelp.org. MapNP.org slash library slash MGMNT slash PRSNLMNT.htm. SBResources.com. SideRoad.com slash leadership slash supervising hyphen employees.html. Toolkit.cch.com. Trainum.com. Tierregistry.com, training registry. TiziaConsulting.com.